a wise man once said, Give ye ear, and hear my voice. Hearken, and hear my speech. So in order to hear, you must first give an ear. In order to learn instruction, you must humble yourself first and then be willing to hear. Proverbs 1 verse 5, a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. And down in verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. In Romans 3, we begin to learn that no man is justified by the deeds of the law because the law was given to shut us up and stop us in our tracks. We acknowledge our sin by the law. So they were like, oh, the law says thou shalt not. And I've done that. I think I've transgressed. Once we acknowledge that, we then get the fear of the Lord. That's the beginning of knowledge. Realize not only have we sinned, who is it that we sinned against? This video is inspired by a buddy of mine. He will remain nameless. And he and I are in a battle of the wills. Apparently our disagreement is what it means to be in Christ, according to Romans 8, 1. So let's read it together. There is, therefore, now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. My buddy, he thinks that we must be walking in the spirit and not in this flesh. Well, here's something. We have no choice but to walk in the spirit because he lives in us if ye have believed. Now, even the demons believe and tremble. Believing is trusting the gospel of our salvation. So what does it mean to be in Christ? I'm just noticing that if we continue reading, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of sin is thou shalt not for what the law could not do and that it was weak through this flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled Build in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, 
Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Being in Christ is having received the Holy Spirit, becoming one in one spirit. So when you humble yourself and hear the gospel of reconciliation and you believe it and trust in it, this is what happens. Colossians 2, starting in verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So, through faith, our sins are forgiven. And in Romans 3, it says, our past sins, our sins that are past. So, why is it that we would only need our past sins forgiven? Well, because when we believe and our sins have been forgiven, the circumcision happens where our soul is circumcised away from this sinful flesh where sin lives. Therefore, God sees our sins no more. What happens in the flesh stays in the flesh. And then our dirty flesh can die and become the dirt that it was. And our spirit that we were given will go back to God who gave it to us for communion with him, to commune with him. So what we were made was living souls, right? And that is dressed in a body. And God gave us a spirit to communicate with him through. But because of our sin, that communication got severed. But through faith in the gospel of reconciliation is when we become reconciled. He reconciled himself to us through the death of his son. And we become reconciled to him through faith in the gospel of reconciliation. 
2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. This is a new creature in Christ through one spirit, the Holy, capital S, Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. For by one spirit are ye all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So through faith, we become one with God in Christ, seated in heavenly places. What is through faith? Simple. No man gets to the Father but through the Son. The Father, the Son, the King, and the wicked sinner with ears. When this wicked sinner humbles himself and hears the gospel and then trusts in it. You go through faith in the Son, what he did for us to get to the Father through the Son. The wicked sinner cannot go around the sun with his works mm -mm. or can he go around the sun with another Jesus or another God through faith in the sun what he did you get to the father simple and my buddy has a problem with me saying no matter what condition we are currently in, we can get to the Father through faith in the Son. Romans 8, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And what would happen if somehow we got persuaded by Satan and his ministers to now get to the point where we even don't believe anymore. 2 Timothy 2.13 If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. We have already become a member of his body through faith in him. And he cannot deny himself. One of my favorites, Romans 14, verse 4. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. Once you're in Christ, you are standing upright because Jesus is upright. Romans 5, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. 
verse 11, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Once you have been placed in Christ, that's where we stand. And that standing is solid. That's a foundation that is solid. But unfortunately, we still live in this flesh, which can be easily persuaded if you don't wear the full armor of God. We can be persuaded to fall. That fall will only lose peace and joy here and rewards in heaven. We as believers are warned to protect ourselves from the wiles of the devil who will come in and try to steal our peace and our joy and our liberty that we have in Christ. Galatians 5, starting in verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Ye Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Romans 10, starting in verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith, which we preach, so you can hear it, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And that confession is the name Jesus. God is salvation. So in Galatians, Paul is asking them, who persuaded you to go back under bondage of which Christ nailed to his cross? 
here's where most Lord Shippers get confused. Once you've received the Holy Spirit, our standing is in Christ. Our walk on the earth is our sanctification. And this is a process. We should walk upright because we're ambassadors of Christ. We're supposed to show the world Christ Jesus through us. This is our reasonable service. Our service is not salvation. Our salvation was a free gift given to us through faith. Our service is our gratitude. And some of our brothers and sisters will not serve as they should, but we are still to love them. And we know we're in Christ if we do. Because if Christ lives in you, he loves them. No matter what condition they're currently in. We don't condemn them for any condition they're in. We help them in their condition. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 17, it says, but whoso hath this world's goods and sees his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? We hate the sin. We love the sinner. Above all things, love each other deeply. I love you. I hope you're blessed.